Good evening, you're watching The Buck Stops Here. I'm Vishnu Shom. On the program tonight, four young Indians die on the line of control as India and Pakistan continue their tit-for-tat retaliation. At this level of conflict, Pakistan can match the Indian Army attack for attack just because of the proximity of posts along the line of control and the geography of the area, where in places their posts dominate ours. In other places, our posts dominate their positions. The number of ceasefire violations that have taken place are colossal. 240 ceasefire violations in just one month and five days of this year. Where is this all headed? Are we headed for war? Is there no other option? How many more soldiers will we lose as tensions along the line of control continue? That's our big focus tonight. <laughs> The country said goodbye to a young soldier. Just a year back as he started his career here at his home in Patodi, friends and relatives had gathered to give Captain Kapil Kundu a huge welcome. On 10th of February, in just six days, he would have been 23 year old. He was planning to come home to celebrate with his mother and sister. Crying, his best friend spoke about the brave young man. When the board exams are closed, we are in 12th. Mm. His, uh, you know, on 10th February mm. 2012, he lost his father. He cleared, I think so, a, with 87%. He write many poems. Yeah. Mostly the poems are related to mother, soldiers, soldiers, mothers, how they mm. feel. One of the poems that couple wrote is titled A Story of a Martyred Soldier where he said, life should be big, not long. On Facebook, he had posted this as his favourite quote. Run, if you cannot, then walk. If you cannot, then crawl, but do not stop until you achieve your goal. A man who lived by his principles on and off the field. कभी उन्होंने ये मैसेज नहीं होने दिया कि वो कैप्टन है या वो हमसे कमांडर कमांडर जब लगा था तब तब से ही कभी हमारे साथ महसूस नहीं होने दिया और गांव के बच्चों को इतना मोटिवेट करता था शाम को दौड़ भाग के लिए भाई तुम दौड़ लगाओ तुम भी आगे जा सकते हो ये अपने चाचा के लड़के के लिए उन्होंने जूते भी अभी पीछे ऑनलाइन मंगवाए थे बोल रहा था कि मैंने तुम बोल रहा था कि मैंने तुम्हारे लिए जूते मंगवा दिए भाई तू रेस लगाया कर 42-year-old Havardal Roshan Lal's village in Jammu is in mourning. Lal had survived the Uri attack in 2016 in which 19 soldiers were killed. But yesterday, he died along with Captain Kundu and two Jawans. When the Pakistan army fired either a mortar or an anti-tank guided missile at their bunker. Nichal is a village of soldiers. 40 men from here are serving in the army and now Lal's eldest son, 15-year-old Abidans, wants to join. The government should talk to the government and the army should take 10 years to them. For the last one month, there has been sudden escalation along the borders in Jammu and Kashmir. In less than three weeks, 18 people, including 10 soldiers, have been killed in Pakistani shelling. After yesterday's killings, the army has vowed to hit back. But the question is, how will this cycle of ceasefire violations and killings going to stop? With Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor in Jammu, Nazir Masoodi for NDTV. Well, let me introduce our panel uh, this evening. Lieutenant General D.S. Huda, the former Northern Army Commander, joins us. Ajay Sani, Executive Director of the Institute of Conflict Management. General Shankar Prashad, the former Director General of uh, Infantry in the Indian Army. Rakesh Sinha, the RSS Dialogue, uh, Ideologue, I should say and uh, Kushpu Sundar of the Congress Party. I'm going to come to our panelists in just a, a, a moment uh, from now, but what really went on yesterday in that post on the line of control? Why did these soldiers die? Was there a mistake? Was there an accident? How, what are some of the circumstances? I have this report. The four Indian soldiers who were killed in Bhimbar Gali in Kashmir were on guard in a small bunker just like this. Last month, NDTV reported from the line of control where posts like this can be targeted at any time, day or night. On Sunday, it was much the same here. There was shelling, the soldiers were in their bunkers, bunkers which are usually meshed into the ground and are designed to withstand the blast of enemy mortars. But then something went disastrously wrong. One of the Pakistani mortar rounds struck near the entrance, which couldn't absorb the intensity of the blast. 
Today, the vice chief of the army said the loss of these four men will not be forgotten. The Indian government has also lodged a complaint with the Pakistan Foreign Office. The Pakistan army along the border has been supporting uh, infiltration by terrorists. So I think action will speak for itself. India and Pakistan have been engaged in their worst ever period of tit-for-tat exchanges along the line of control in a month's time. In 2015, there were 152 violations of the ceasefire agreement. In 2016, there were 228. Last year, there were 860 incidents. But in just one month and five days of this year, there have already been a whopping 240 ceasefire violations. The death of four Indian soldiers raises important questions. At this level, India and Pakistan match each other in this eyeball-for-eyeball eyeball confrontation. The big question, where is it all leading to? Vishnu Shom for NDTV. Well, let me go across to General Huda first. Uh, good evening, sir. Straight, direct question to you. Are we headed to war? Uh, Vishnu, I, I don't think we are headed, uh, headed to war. Uh, but having said that, let me also say... Uh, I don't see the situation calming down. Uh, you know, uh, what is happening in 2017 and what has uh, happened in the, uh, in the first month of, uh, of this year, uh, I think we will see more of it. And I say this for, you know, two, three reasons. Uh, we can't just look at ceasefire violations in, uh, in isolation. Uh, we have to look at it from the whole gamut of uh, India-Pakistan relations uh, and what is happening in Kashmir. So, uh, you know, relations between the two countries are at a low. Uh, diplomacy, uh, I, think, uh, I, I think, is at rock bottom. Uh, there is absolutely no engagement that is taking place. Uh, Kashmir, uh, you know, whatever one might say, continues to be uh, a little on the boil. Uh, and in situations like this, uh, I see no incentive uh, both for India and Pakistan uh, to actually, uh, you know, come to any kind of peaceful agreement. So, uh, unfortunate uh, as it may sound, uh, the fact is that we are going to see more of this. Ajay Sani, uh, would you agree with that assessment that, look, what are the reasons uh, which India would need to see before saying, okay, fine, let's ensure that the line of control is, is a more peaceful place? I mean, the terrorists keep getting pushed in, there is an attack taking place in, uh, outside an army base in Kashmir as we speak now, hopefully not a very big one. But then, then what happens? So this, this vicious circle continues? And, and if so, where is it leading? Ajay. You see, uh, well, first of all, where is it leading, if I can uh, reverse that? Uh, I think neither side is uh, gaining anything strategically uh, by these exchanges of fire. The problem, however, is not that uh, it's part of the whole dynamic of uh, terrorism in Kashmir, etc. Uh, rather, the problem is that in both sides, both in Pakistan and on the Indian side, this is feeding into a particular pattern of a political discourse and of a media discourse. Neither side can pull back. All these incidents are being blown up at a national level. They are feeding into a public anger. They are feeding into a uh, political pressure for retaliation. And neither side can say, let's sit down and talk this over. Because right. it would appear to be a concession in the face of provocation. That is the uh, cycle that is not breaking. And this cycle was established with the enormous publicity given to the surgical strikes yep. in 2016. Had those strikes occurred, and retaliatory action will always be taken by armed forces. Let that be very, very clear. And was being taken even before the surgical strikes. Mm -hmm. Because this was raised to the level of public political discourse, national political discourse, neither side now has the capacity really to pull back because both sides are actually right-wing, ultra-nationalist okay. uh, in their orientation. Uh, General Shankar Prashad, uh, would, would you... I actually tend to agree with Ajay entirely that what we are seeing now on the line of control and the international border in Jammu and Kashmir is being fed by a certain um, sense. It's being played out on social media. It's being, it's being played out on, on prime time, certainly not on our channel, but on the other networks of let's get the Pakistanis. Let's go to war. You see rhetoric of let's, we will take over POK. We'll sort them out once and for all. Um, this is not sensible. 
because a military planner doesn't plan it that way. I somehow tend to agree in somewhat what you have said and what the previous speaker said. See, it seems to me that the country wants, and when I say country, the, the leaders of the country want status quo ante. Status quo ante is a possible option. Keep losing your men, it doesn't matter to anybody. It hurts me, it hurts you perhaps, it hurts every citizen. But what is causing this issue to escalate is without as actually escalating at the military level or the strategic level, we are escalating by statements like Mutor Jawab Denge. What is the need to say this? If you can't do this Mutor Jawab, then there is no need to say this. You've been saying it for last one year. Every time anybody gets killed on the line of control, we hear Mutor Jawab Denge, Hamne Army Se Kahi Diya, Ki Inko Maar Do. Das, Unke Marte, un, Hamare Marte, Unke Bees Maar Do. This is all raising pitches and only escalating the situation without actually doing anything. What is happening today? What has happened today actually? And you said it yourself and somebody else also said that the Pakistan army on the line of control has escalated. So far we were dealing with small arms like rifle, LMG and mortars at best. Today I believe they have fired an anti-tank guided missile. They fired Who's six of the them Mutor yesterday. Jawab now? They fired six of them generally yesterday. There you are. In the same place. Yeah, so there you are. So who is escalating it? They have, es they have labeled. Now we will fire another one. They no, will fire another but one. We've been firing we it keep people here. even last what, year. What happens? In what fact, happens today the, the vice chief matter. said that, you know, when so this happens, happens we, we use everything. We use, uh, we use uh, heavy mortars. Well, we I use, don't know what they use. You know, that I mean, you may missiles, be better. everything. Uh, no, artillery, that is, that direct is, that, fire. That's, so a, that's again the same point. Yeah, yeah, it is. No, no that's the same point. They will use one weapon, we'll use another weapon. They'll escalate, we'll escalate. That's not the point. The point is this, that either you develop a strategic response and display it, or leave it as status quo ante. Don't hype it by making statements like, Ek sir ka das sir lenge, das sir ka saw sir lenge. Okay. That is rubbish. Okay. Khushbu so Sundar. The, now, there's a bigger point I want to make. Besides, no, I want to make a big, bigger point, just one more point. Yeah. See, there is a tactical response. The tactical response has been given and the Prime Minister says in 2016 after the Uri incident, the army is allowed to do a tactical response. And the former army commander is sitting here with you and he agrees with me and he was very much in chair at that time to say we did a tactical response with a bit of strategic support when the surgical strike took place. At that point in time, the Prime Minister said that we have a tactical response and we have a strategic response. Yep. The strategic response takes time to build and I'm building that. That the whole of 2017 has gone past. And what has happened in the early 2018? We get a defense budget which is lower, as low as the 1960s. Okay, General, what I have to interrupt you. I only side. have, yeah. I only have seven certain. minutes left. I, I, we did a half an hour program, sir, so I need to get my other two panelists as well. Kushbu, uh, let me come to you first. Uh, is it the sense, is it your sense, is it the sense of the Congress party that uh, there, is, there is deliberate political rhetoric, uh, you know, ahead of the elections, on the basis, on the backs of our soldiers who are fighting with their lives on the line of control. Is that what is fueling this? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, because I think uh, first the salutations to the martyred uh, brave hearts of our country because we have been losing people every day and which is not accepted and the rhetoric uh, statements uh, like one of the panelists said by the government, you know, they have been trying to fire it from the soldiers of a brave heart, uh, from the shoulders of a brave hearts, which is not acceptable. I mean, you know, when UPA government was in uh, power, then they like, unko lal aankh nahi dikhate hain. And now the kind of statements they have been making in every uh, uh, cease, uh, ceasefire violations, I think we have not been seeing a very, very decisive policy of the government on this LOC IB we need we need a very fine tuned policies for this and which we don't see it and yes when you look at the budget this year it is the lowest since 1962 they might say that they have increased by 7.5 I don't want to talk about the budget the because then I'll be sitting over here talking for the no, next I'm two saying hours that how are we going to fight it out no no how that's a separate point out, I, I'm sir. trying to understand the LC it, situation it, it, no I'm saying I, and I, I uh, Kushbu, without no, doubt, we, I understand we, we what you're to, saying about the budget. 
No, no, I understand what you're saying about the budget. It, it and uh, you know, I mean, that's a larger issue. Let's just focus on the LC for the moment. How are we going to fight? How are we going to fight? We're losing our soldiers, our, our brave hearts every day. The Pakistanis every are day. also what losing a lot. But what happened to a but, 22 year old? But Rakesh, yeah, Rakesh Pakistan Sena, are losing. But here we are, where we're saying an eye for an eye. Come on, we need a dialogue. When we wanted a dialogue, you have been blaming us. What is happening now? Rakesh what happened Sena, to your dialogue should now? Should we have a dialogue? Well, how, long, it's, how long? It's and not, how long are not, you going to lose We are not winning. We are not losing. They are losing <laughs> lives. We are losing lives. We are not willing to escalate into a no, full conflict. Pa uh, Congress party is treating Pakistan problem just like a one of the provinces politics in India. You know, this is a, uh, this is a, this is related oh, to international on, politics. Uh, moreover, uh, 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 I, I disagree with Rajasthani. What a rightist? You know, when Pakistan, when we offered for dialogue, all efforts by the Narendra Modi government for dialogue. For that, he has he has been criticized by the opposition parties. Many of his friends criticized Narendra Modi, but he did that. Pakistan failed it. Now Pakistan is completely isolated. Vishnu Pakistan for the first time is completely isolated. America is giving threat to Pakistan. Do we keep at losing the, our boys? No, at the, on I, the I line say, of control. If war is, re if war is required, this is not war mongering. If Pakistan is coming, killing our soldiers, martyrdom, mart honored martyrdom required that we should be prepared for the no, war. No, but Pakistan's existence is a dangerous for India. You know, Indra. I so there say, should be war, is what you're yes, saying. Yes, Indra Gandhi. Sorry, Indra Gandhi, did you say that? Indra did you say that we need, we need to have a war? Indra Gandhi led a war in 1971. Oh, Pakistan was divided. We, Rakesh, we need another war. Rakesh, Rakesh, we need another you war. Yeah. Go you're saying that? Yes, we need another war because the logical. You know, Khushbu, logical conclusion of such development is a war. Because Pakistan, Pakistan is not going to be satisfied. So two by, nuclear arms, two you, nuclear armed nations are, they are, will go to war. They are asking for a dialogue. Pakistan wants Kashmir. Are you ready to meet nuclear armed? Nations yeah. will go to war. Yeah. Two nuclear armed nations will go to war. You know, you know that the doctrine of limited war can be possible, and we should not. What be if they don't accept that doctrine and launch and you know, attack Pakistan, us with tactical nuclear weapons? You, you know, the, let the army decide. Let the government decide. The government and army both are uh, both are prepared. And I am uh, I am really surprised when there is a, there is a surgical strike. These people ask that the, the army should give the proof. You are demoralizing the army. You are degrading the army. You are politicizing the army, and you are saying the rightists are doing politics. Rightists are, are not doing, doing politics. You we, are, we, are for, we are we are we want peace the kind of dialogue we want peace spoken, the we went for the peace you know the they have thrown the stone have done. we we went for the peace the they have thrown the stone okay all right kushbu and kushbu kushbu and rakesh sinaji just one moment i want i want to talk to the military experts general huda you've been listening in is this what the problem is it's it's our political class targeting each other on something as important as as the lives of our young men on the line of control. But it's the rhetoric, uh, and, and, and Rakesh Sena makes a point, there needs to be a war. That's how things will get resolved. As, uh, do, do you agree, sir, General Huda? See, uh, see Vishnu, uh, let me make my point. You know, uh, what happens, uh, of course, is you know this whole thing goes into a rhetoric. And uh, you know, Ajay, Ajay mentioned uh, that, uh, you know, somehow the media and the political rhetoric is driving, uh, you know, what, what is happening on the LC. Um, I, I tend to disagree. Uh, how we plan our strategy on the line of control and how the military needs to respond, uh, there is, you know, we, we hear everything, uh, but frankly, uh, it's done by the military and it's done in a way that we think is militarily feasible. Uh, Unfortunately, Vishnu, uh, whatever we might say, there are no strategic options, uh, you know, left with us. Uh, you can deal with these things diplomatically. You can hope for, uh, you know, America to come in and, and do something uh, with, with Pakistan and, and put pressure on them. It's only a hope. Uh, as far as the Americans are concerned, uh, you know, they're... Their worries but General, Pakistan, their worries, why are their you worries, trying to say that worries, war sir. needs to be considered as an option? That's my question to you, sir. No, no, no. So war, it's, it's not war as an option, uh, Vishnu. It's a compulsion, Vishnu. Not option. It is a compulsion. What? Well, what? I, no, no, no. let's see what he has to say. General, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, let me, let, let, uh. let me, uh, let me just complete my point. I'm saying, you know, if you're going to have uh, Pakistan continuously sending terrorists across yes. who are who are carrying out mutilation, ID attacks, ambushes on your soldiers, uh, what do we do? Do we let them get away with, uh, with impunity? No. So therefore, there has to be pressure on the line of control. 
in what form it has to take place uh, selectively you know let's leave that to the let's leave that okay. to the military okay ajay would you like uh, to and, and i'm sure and i'm sure we can i'm i'm sure we can do it unfortunately as i said you know either either diplomacy works or or international pressure works uh, and that's not worked in this case ajay it's not worked in this case this is the price that we need to pay with the lives of our men to keep up the pressure on pakistan which pushes in terrorists that's a fact nobody is disputing that terrorist attacks all the time we may not be ready to go into a war right now but this is something that india needs to do in in attacking them effectively along the ib and the lc uh, that's what rakesh ji feels he says we need to go to war but i'm i'm asking you about the pressure on the lc right now where we hit them very hard does that need to continue you see i i'll just before i get to that i have to uh, speak of this whole uh, war mongering kind of a thing war is a compulsion war is a compulsion for those who don't have to fight it you know these are all people who talk very big thump their chests they're not the ones who are going to go and fight in the line of control or are going to participate in any war these are people who speak from very secure and very comfortable uh, environments number 1 number 2 all right let us for a moment say that war is an option we must consider what are we preparing for it the budget question that was being repeatedly raised by earlier speakers <laughs> is critical okay if you are going to talk about a war and must you must understand that a war with pakistan is potentially going to be a two front war we do not have the kind of support we had in 1971 number 1 internationally we will not only find that america <laughs> will fail us we are like likely to find that russia is not quite an ardent supporter as it was in 71 so please understand when we talk about strategic options you must understand strategy and not just this stridency this this abusive war mongering this jingoism that is uh, being being spouted over Bishno, here is, if you don't understand pakistan, the, these issues is pakistan it's, it's no use, pakistan uh, is compelling us for war and he is accusing us for war mongering had there been a pakistani strategist he would have been accused me i am saying that there should dialogue but what dialogue prime minister has gone to pakistan he had met the pakistani prime minister then he had made all war. the efforts what what else war. you want i don't you, you want problem. that we should go to begging for war. Go to pakistan for peace you are not willing begging to pay for, you are you not are, willing are to spend money you are questioning our dignity you are questioning our dignity what about our our people are the of course our soldiers you are you are, you are, you are creating a binary between soldiers and civilians course, everyone in the army is questioning your military no 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 everyone is questioning you are questioning you are okay gentlemen one second jay sahani sahab you are speaking just like a pakistani if you do not want to read you are not speaking like any you can like anybody no no he is he is questioning we cannot, we cannot make a person a pakistani or an indian sitting on a television program let's not get into that kind of debate no, argument war mongering no, no, he is that's what they do he's, basically he is calling all that's the people as war mongers of india he, he has a right to that uh, to that opinion no no i'm calling you a war monger i am calling you a war monger right. and i'm calling you a war monger one, one second one second both of you i have time for one yes, but war last, is a compulsion if the war is one required, last you go for one the last war. one last comment general shankar prashad i have point. 30 seconds please go ahead yeah i'll give you i'll look a tactical response has been given all this while at the army level we need to now work on a limited strategic option which in my, my understanding would be make the line of control military post absolutely incapable of responding whether you use army navy or air force is a matter of detail with the military and the civilian government can decide but you got to deal with this post across the line of control and some of the post across the jammu area of uh, of the international border yep. only when you make them incapable of responding will anything happen this will fall in the realms of a limited strategic response it is not war mongering it is neither a war and we are not ready for a war as yet we need to take time to get ready for a war okay. get ready it will need a defense budget much more than 1.5 all GDP. right okay general prashad thanks very much we are completely out of time the point that the general makes is not a full scale war not the situation on the line of control right now but something in between whether you call it a war or conflict these are difficult choices one way or the other every time an indian soldier falls on the international border or the line of control all of us feel very very sad where is this all going that I, i began this program by asking this question and i will end it by that thank you all very much for being with us